I'll do. Yeah, maybe not the uh, the best footwear. Firstly, I would like to thank everyone who supports the channel. Everyone who supported me. Stop eating the wood. Stephen, move away from the wood. Go on. Get out of it. <laughs> Go on. Go on then, lad. That way. Everyone who supports channel, support me on Patreon. Everyone who's bought me a brew. Guest, past, present and future. And for the community that they are, and I mean that, honestly, the support you give to guests is amazing. Very uplifting. It's uplifting for me, but it's also uplifting for them guests. You know, when people aren't judging them, wishing them well, positivity, it is amazing. Okay, guys, uh, Real Porridge Podcast moving forward. Available on audio. Now, we started uploading... Um, we will be uploading both the chats and the vlogs to Spotify and the like, all platforms. So if you're driving in your car and you so and you so choose, you'll be able to uh, to listen to moi. Yeah, but uh, thank you for your continued support. So I'm going to talk about the Tate brothers. A um, few people have asked me my thoughts on their situation. Uh, Andrew, wow. It is very slippy. Andrew and Tristan Tate. So most people will know who these guys are. The names are everywhere. They are definitely influencers. For me, the real influencers, not, you know, somebody who's got a gym channel who puts stuff out there trying to sell you products. Uh, these guys have got massive followings on social media. Um, People are either going to love them or hate them. They speak about a lot of controversial subjects. Subjects that you and I might have strong opinions on, but wouldn't voice. And they voice them on platforms, big platforms. You know, thousands and thousands and thousands of followers. So they live in Romania. I don't know why two guys who have endless wealth um, would choose to live in Romania. However... They were arrested, it's not the first time. Uh, the allegations are rape, uh, people trafficking and the like, and maybe some involvement with pornography, with people that have been trafficked. They're locked up in a, in a Romanian jail. The judge has just given them another month. Uh, no charges have been laid, no evidence presented. So. One of the questions was, do I believe authorities have the power to do this? They've done it. Yeah. Um, are they guilty or not? I don't know. But they have a lot of influence. There's a lot of people about now that don't like all these subjects. They don't want people talking about it, especially people with real influence. You know, if you look at the viewing figures for Andrew Tate alone, Unlike YouTube, all the videos on, you only have to put his name in the search bar, you know, millions and millions of views, millions and millions of views, millions and millions of opinions. They've been taken out of the game. The damage up to now for them is uh, reputation. You know, their reputation maybe, have been, maybe has been permanently damaged. The authorities, can they do that? You know, would they do that? Um, I do believe so, yeah. We'll have to see whether any evidence gets presented and whether they actually get charged and get proper jail sentences. The scary thing for me is I've seen authorities, you know, as a prison officer, have the power to lock people up um, with no charges or evidence. We had four lads on remand when I was at Strangeways. Strangeways HMP Manchester, formerly known as Strangeways, yeah? Three of them were user-friendly, got on with the staff. Uh, one of them, not so much. He was one of a very small percentage of prisoners who don't want anything to do with staff, don't want to torture, don't want anything from you, which is fine. I completely understand that. 
The other three, very user friendly. Uh, one of them in particular I got on with. Normally, you wouldn't stand and discuss with a the prisoner their charges. We had many conversations. Um, all four lads have been in their time and may well have still been, I don't know, involved in gang activity in and around Manchester. So they had a history, they had a criminal history. The one that got on with the best, Jones, eh? Um, you know, said so we'll be walking Mr. S when we go to court. He says, what do you mean? He says, we'll get off, there's no charges. Won't be getting a prison sentence. Uh, two years. These four lads were on remand. Two years is a long time on remand. For people who don't understand what remand is, you are remanded into custody, placed in prison, pending your court appearance. Um, there's people who walk away from court, some people will get sentenced. Um, usually, remand time is taken into account, so if you get a three year sentence and you've done 12 months on remand, that will get taken off your sentence. You can see where I'm going with that. So two years, these lads, pretty much on K-Wing, they did disappear the rest of the prison, but came back to K-Wing. Uh, went to court and never came back. Yeah, they walked. About three months after, I saw Jonesy on a visit uh, with his young child. Nothing to answer to, two years locked up. He said the police wanted it off the streets, uh, took it on the chin. I guess you would have to, I don't know. I've never been involved in criminality, but if you have a criminal past, then maybe that's part of it. It's a bit of a game, isn't it? And then there's the other lad. Now this one, uh, I did think about a long time. And his name was Morris. I did know his first name. Salford lad, I believe. He was uh, into Muay Thai. Yeah, he was a fighter. I think he fought in K1. He was quite successful as well. Got talking to him one day on the induction wing on E-Wing. I looked at him, he got shorts on. Yeah, his shins were a mess. I asked him whether he played rugby. You know, I played uh, prop when I used to play rugby. That'll have triggered some people because I've mentioned it for a long time. Because <laughs> of his shins, he's scarred and he says, no, a box, Mr. S. Uh, Thai boxer, Muay Thai. Okay, we get us chatting. And this is, as he related it, there or thereabouts. It's a long time ago, this, probably... 20 years um he's driving that road in his mitsubishi evo with a private registration yeah he's got his own house he's involved in business enterprises you know a gym thai boxing gym and the like um he sees someone he used to know obviously he still knows him and he gave him a lift a few days later he's arrested at gunpoint the lad that he gave a lift to had robbed a post office. Yeah, uh, he'd gone into a post office, I'm sure it was a house brick with a brick in his hand, threatened the person behind the counter and they're giving him 10 pounds there or thereabouts and he's walked out the post office. Darren Morris, I think it was called Darren Morris. Some of the lads will know who I'm talking about in the comments, just give us a reminder. He's walking down the road Darren Morris, I believe it, Darren Morris. Give him a lift. That's it, 18 months in jail on remand. He got locked up for being the getaway driver. Yeah, his vehicle stood out. Private registration, own house, own business, young family. The frustrations in that lad, being locked up for 18 months. But just like the other four lads, he went to court and he was out. Job done. No charges to answer to. It got thrown out. That's scary, that. Now, he was a cheeky chappy. Maybe he had been involved in criminality or on the fringes, I don't know. It's not for me to cast aspersions. I got on with him, you know. He was a likeable lad. We had some good chats, but you could see the frustrations. You know, he'd have a little chat, help him to keep a lid on it. Yeah, very frustrating. Stephen, I'm going to leave it there, guys. 
I'll be interested to see what happens with the Tate brothers. Now, love them or hate them, you know, and there'll be millions of people do both, it will still be interesting to see the outcome. Like I say, as it is now, the reputation's ruined. Whether, whether they will get out or get charged and still have an influence on people. Stephen! He's a bugger with a wood. Stephen! Come here! Anyway, guys, thanks for your continued support. Like I say, we've started uh, putting content out there. Audio on all podcast platforms. Um, so you can listen to me whenever you like. Stephen, good boy. Thanks for coming. I'll see you there.